Welcome back to Very Ordinary Differential Equations. In this lecture, we study a technique called reduction of order. Suppose we have a linear second order equation. So we've got p naught of x times y double prime plus p1 of x y prime plus p2 of x y equals f of x. Now the coefficients pi are not necessarily constant and the forcing function capital F of x is not of any particular form. This is a general linear second order equation. Now furthermore, let's suppose I know one non-zero solution to the complementary equation. So y1 is some function that solves this complementary equation right here. We're going to use the single solution that we know, y1, to transform this problem into a first order equation, which is presumably easier to solve in order to find another solution. And this technique is called reduction of order because from a second order differential equation and one solution, we're gonna combine those two things together and get a first order differential equation. We will have reduced the order. So as we've said, y sub one is some solution to this complementary equation right here. We're gonna assume that the original equation given here can be solved by some function of the form u times y1. So y1 solves the complementary equation, and we're going to assume that a solution to the original can be written as a product of some function u times the function y1. Well, from the product rule, we'll get that y prime will be u prime y1 plus u y prime, and the second derivative will be u double prime y1 plus two u prime y1 plus u y1 double prime. So if I take this and put it into the original differential equation, we get p naught of x times y double prime, which is this whole expression here, plus p one of x times y prime, which is this expression, plus p two of x times y, which is uy one, should be equal to capital F of x. And we're going to see what this tells us about the function u. So if we rearrange some terms, we can write it as follows. Notice now they've been grouped by what derivative of u they are multiplying. So something times u double prime, something times u prime, and something times u equals f. So here is our expression written in a way that makes it look like a differential equation in u. Something times u double prime plus something times u prime plus something times u equals f. But look at the coefficient on u. Okay, y1 was a solution to the complementary equation. That means p0 times y1 double prime plus p1 times y1 prime plus p2 times y1 is zero. So the coefficient on u here, all of this is just zero altogether because y1 was assumed to solve the complementary equation. So I can ignore that term. Altogether, what we now have is p0 y1 u double prime plus 2p0 y1 prime plus p1 y1 u prime equals f. And this is actually a first order equation. It doesn't look like it at first, but if I let u prime be some other function v, and now p0 y1, I'm just gonna call q0, and 2p0 y1 prime plus p1 y1, I'm gonna call q1. Remember, the assumption is that y1 is a function we know. So y1 and y1 prime are known functions. p0 and p1 came from the original differential equation. So q0 is some explicit function that we can compute based on the information we have, as is q1. Then this becomes q0, but if u prime is v, then u double prime is just v prime. So what do we now have? We have a first order differential equation in v. Since this is a first order differential equation, we can attempt to solve it using other techniques, like variation of parameters, for example. So let's take a look at an example of putting this reduction of order followed by variation of parameters into practice. Find a solution to x squared y double prime plus xy prime minus y equals one over x, given that y1 equals x is actually a solution to the complementary equation. So what we do is we set y to be an unknown function u times y1, where y1 was just x. So y is an unknown function u times x. Well then, its first derivative is u prime x plus u, and now x prime is just one. And its second derivative we can compute like this, u double prime times x plus two u prime. We plug those into the original uh, differential equation to get x squared times y double prime plus x times y prime minus y 
equals 1 over x. Now we rearrange by what derivative of u appears, and we get x cubed u double prime. That's what we get from this term right here. How many u primes do we have? 2x squared and another x squared. And then how many u's do we have? We have an xu and a minus xu. They cancel out. So altogether, we now have x cubed u double prime plus 3x squared u prime equals 1 over x. So this is what we've reduced our differential equation to, where u is still an unknown function. But now I let v be the derivative of u and divide everything by x squared. Well then, we end up with xv prime plus 3v equals 1 over x cubed. We now have a linear first order equation. So we can solve the complementary equation, xv prime plus 3v equals zero. That's an Euler equation. Notice it's a pretty simple one. We have a first derivative and multiply it by x, and then this is left alone. So how do we solve Euler equations? We assume the solution is a power of x and see what happens. Here we would have xv prime, here is 3v. And we see that this is directly solved by letting alpha equal negative 3. So in trying to solve xv prime plus 3v equals 1 over x cubed, we found the complementary equation is solved by v1 equals x to the minus third power. So we can use variation of parameters again to try to solve the non-homogeneous equation xv prime plus 3v equals 1 over x cubed. So let's let v be an unknown function w times v1, in which case x v prime plus 3v equals 1 over x cubed. All right, I rearrange this according to uh, which derivative of w appears. Of course, x v1 prime plus 3v1 was 0, so that term vanishes, and we end up with x v1 w prime equals 1 over x cubed. Okay, so at this point we're trying to solve x v1 w prime equals 1 over x cubed. Since v1 was already known to be x to the minus third power, this ultimately just reduces to w prime equals 1 over x. Therefore, w is the log of x. And honestly, we might need the log of the absolute value of x, but from the forcing function being 1 over x, we know that any solutions we find are not going to be valid at 0 anyway. So we're either on positive or negative numbers. So let's just assume we're on the positive numbers, and then we don't need the absolute value there. Okay, so w is log x, but v was wv1. Remember, v1 was x to the minus third, so v is x to the minus third times log x. Well, if v is x to the minus third times log x, and v was u prime, and y was uy1, now we just have to solve these individual steps here. So, if v is u prime, then u is the integral of v. The integral of x to the minus third log x is negative 2 log x plus 1 times x to the minus second. And again, we can pick any constant of integration we want. We really just need to find a solution, not all of them. And finally, since y was uy1, well, now that we have u, and remember that y1 at the beginning of the problem was given to be x, I multiply that by x and we get y should be negative 2 log x plus 1 times x to the minus first. Let's do it again. Let's find a solution to y double prime plus 4y equals x, given that the sine of 2x is a solution to the complementary equation. You can check this, of course, by the way. If I take two derivatives of sine of 2x, we're going to end up with negative 4 sine of 2x plus 4 sine of 2x will indeed be 0. So sine of 2x is a solution to the complementary equation. So once again, we're going to set y to be equal to some unknown function times y1 and start computing derivatives. So y double prime will end up being u double prime y1 plus 2u prime y1 prime plus u y1 double prime, okay, which works out to be u double prime sine of 2x plus 4u prime cos of 2x minus 4u times sine of 2x, just by computing the first and second derivatives of y1. Taking this into our original equation, y double prime plus 4y equals x, we get y double prime plus 4y equals x, but there's y double prime plus 4y. All of this was y double prime, and remember that y was u times y1 
or u times the sine of 2x. So 4u sine of 2x is 4y. So y double prime plus 4y equals x. And now we group these according to uh, what derivative of u we have. And of course, what should happen if you've done this correctly is all of your u's vanish. And here they have, we had 4u sine x and a minus 4u sine of 2x. So those canceled out. At this point, we let v equal u prime and rephrase it in those terms. So I have sine of 2x v prime plus 4 cos of 2x times v equals x. Now what we do is we try to find a single solution to the complementary equation here. Our goal at this point is to find the function v, which is u prime. How do I find a solution to this? Now I just have a first order equation, and so we attack it as we have. First, find a solution to the complementary equation. Sine 2x v1 prime plus 4 cos 2x v1 equals 0. So we need to find some v1 that solves this. This happens to be a separable equation, so we'll just solve it that way. Okay, so moving one term over to the other side and then separating our variables, we get that the log of v1 is negative 2 log of sine of 2x. In other words, the log of cosecant squared of 2x. Just bringing this negative 2 in as a power, sine to the minus 2 power becomes cosecant squared. Then, exponentiating both sides, we get that v1 must be cosecant squared of 2x. So we have found a v1 that solves this complementary equation. Now we're going to go back and solve the original equation in v. So v1 cosecant squared of 2x solves this complementary equation right here. Sine 2x v1 prime plus 4 cos of 2x v1 equals 0. We're going to do variation of parameters again. Let v be an unknown w times v1 in an attempt to solve this non-homogeneous equation. Well, if v is w v1, I can apply the product rule and compute v prime. Then I'm going to take this expression for v prime, substitute it there, this expression for v, and substitute it there. And we'll end up with this right here. But notice, once I distribute this out, we'll have sine 2x w v1 prime for cosine 2x w v1. That's just w times the complementary equation, which we know is 0. Because v1 solves the complementary equation, we can cancel a bunch of terms out, and this simplifies down to just sine 2x v1 w prime equals x. Now remember, v1 is cosecant squared of 2x, aka 1 over sine squared of 2x. That's going to cancel this out right here. Sine 2x times cosecant squared of 2x simplifies to just cosecant of 2x, w prime equals x. So cosecant of 2x w prime is x. Multiplying both sides by sine of 2x, we get w prime is x sine of 2x. And now we can integrate. We can integrate by parts on the right. If I let u equal x and dv be sine of 2x, this is a fairly straightforward integration by parts problem, where w will be seen to be 1 quarter times the sine of 2x minus 2x cos of 2x. Now that's w, but what were we using w for? we can now begin to reconstruct our original solution. So v was w v1, here's w, and v1 was cosecant squared of 2x. I'm going to take this cosecant squared of 2x and multiply it across here. Okay, so sine of 2x times cosecant squared is just leaves behind a single cosecant. And similarly, this cosine times cosecant squared, I'm going to expand out as cotangent times cosecant. This is putting it into a form that will be a little more convenient later on. All right, so here is v. It's 1 quarter cosecant of 2x minus 2x cotangent 2x cosecant 2x. But what was v? v was u prime. So I just have to integrate this. And that's why I converted it into this expression, because this is a little easier to integrate by comparing to some tables of integrals. So if I integrate this, it will work out to just be 1 quarter x cosecant of 2x. But then what was u used for? y was u y1, and y1 is the sine of 2x up at the very top. So y is u y1, 1 quarter x cosecant 2x sine of 2x, but hey, the cosecant and sine cancel out, and it's just 1 quarter x.
A third example, let's find all possible solutions to x squared y double prime plus 2x times x minus 1 y prime plus x squared minus 2x plus 2 y equals x cubed e to the 2x given that y1 being x e to the minus x does solve the complementary equation. We're not going to bother checking it, but we are given that x e to the x would solve x squared y double prime plus 2x x minus 1 y prime plus x squared minus 2x plus 2 y equals 0. So let's let u be an unknown function times the one solution of the complementary equation that we have, in which case we can compute its derivative right here. y1 was just x e to the minus x, so y1 prime can be computed pretty quickly to be 1 minus x times e to the minus x. We can also compute its second derivative by taking the first and second derivative of our given x e to the minus x, and it works out like so. So here are y prime and y double prime, which we throw into the differential equation. Then what we do is we collect terms according to which derivative of u they have. So we're going to take all of this for y double prime, multiply it by x squared, all of this for y prime, multiply it by 2x and x minus 1, then all of this times y, which was u y1, and we're just going to collect which terms have a u, which have a u prime, and which have a u double prime. And ultimately, it simplifies quite a lot. Now, we should definitely expect all of our u's to vanish. That's built into this technique. In this particular problem, all of your u primes will also vanish, so that's nice. So we end up with u double prime x cubed e to the minus x, and we were hoping to get out this forcing function of x cubed e to the 2x. Well, we can cancel the x cubed from both sides, and we just get u double prime equals e to the 3x. So now we have u double prime is e to the 3x. We're trying to find a u that solves this, and honestly, it's not terribly difficult to just think about it for a minute and come up with a solution, but let's follow the same technique we've been doing. So we let v be u prime. So u double prime is just v prime. So we have v prime equals e to the 3x. We can solve this directly, but we're going to follow the same technique we've been doing. So let's find the solution to the complementary equation of v prime equals 0. Well, that just means v needs to be a constant, for example, 1. But that was u prime. So if u prime is 1, well, then u is equal to x. And y1 solved the complementary equation. So this choice of u lets y2 equal uy1 also solve the complementary equation. Well, now we actually have two solutions to the complementary equation. y1 was given, x e to the minus x. But we also found u times y1, where u was solved to be x. So x times y1 is just x squared e to the minus x is another solution to the complementary equation. So now we have two linearly independent solutions to a second order homogeneous equation. So we have a fundamental set of solutions to the complementary equation, x e to the minus x that we were given and this new one that we just found, x squared e to the minus x. So now let's return to the problem of actually solving the non-homogeneous equation. So we'll resume where we were, where y was u y1 with u double prime equals e to the 3x. So you can directly solve this as just 1 ninth e to the 3x. So we can set yp to be uy1, having found that u should be 1 ninth e to the 3x. So 1 ninth e to the 3x times y1, well y1 was x e to the minus x, and we end up with 1 ninth times x times e to the 2x. So that's one particular solution. Therefore, all solutions to the differential equation are given by linear combinations of the two linearly independent solutions to the complementary homogeneous equation plus the y sub p that we just found. So some constant x e to the minus x, another constant x squared e to the minus x, and y sub p, which was 1 ninth x e to the 2x. Well, altogether, what have we covered? For a linear second order differential equation in this very general form, if you have a single solution to the complementary equation, then you can find one particular solution to the overall equation by going through a few steps. 
First, you let y sub p be assumed to take the form u, an unknown function, times y1. Then, if you compute yp double prime, yp prime, and throw it all in here, all the terms with u will vanish, so only u double prime and u prime will remain. Then you set some a new unknown function v to be u prime. So since all of our u's vanished, and we only have u double prime and u prime, this is v, this is v prime, now we have a linear first order equation in v, which can be solved using any technique you want, very commonly variation of parameters. Now if you consider the forcing function to be zero, the same technique does work to find a second solution to the complementary equation. We did that in the last example, where we just said let's pretend that this for the moment is zero to just find another solution to the complementary equation.